welcome back to the red dice diaries and in this gm's tips video i'm going to be talking about games masters under the hammer and now when i say under the hammer i mean those times when you have very little time to prepare a game in advance we've all been there you've maybe been busy the previous week or you've just not had the free time to put as much pre-session prep into your game as you otherwise might have liked to have done now there are a few things you can have to hand to make it easier to prepare a game with little time and there's a few things i found invaluable to help with this the first is a small brainstorming notepad this is mine it's just a simple pad i bought from a stationery shop and I use it for brainstorming ideas. I've normally got it with me and any sort of random ideas that occurred to me that I think may be useful for a role playing session later on, I just jot down in here, not necessarily in neat. And I will put up a few pictures now, just showing a few sample pages of my brainstorming notebook so you can see what I'm talking about. This was actually an idea I got from Never Unprepared, the Complete Games Master's Guide to Session Prep by Engine Publishing, which is a great book I hope to be reviewing at some point in the future, and I highly recommend it. In that book, it recommends the use of a brainstorming notebook, and it's certainly something I found very useful. I also which will come as no surprise to those who know me and how much of a big fan of the fate system I am, make a lot of use of these plain index cards. Very useful for taking notes on during a session and for organizing information. The third thing that you will find invaluable whilst planning a session in a fairly small amount of time are your previous session notes. So it's always a good idea to try and update these as frequently as you can so if i'm planning a game and i maybe don't have as much time as i otherwise like what i do is as much as i can in the time running up to the session even if it's only a few hours beforehand i take out my notebook and i write down any ideas i have for odd scenes or moments that i think would be cool or enjoyable for the players in the session once i've got a few things noted down I then look through my previous session notes and compare them with the brainstorming notes I've got in my little notebook to see if any natural links or connections between them leap out at me, a sort of in I can use to bring these new ideas into the game. And I use this to narrow down my brainstorm notes into things that can conceivably occur during the next session. There's always a few random ideas that maybe you think just wouldn't work at this stage of your game or you can't see a way to fit them in that is absolutely fine you'll always have those ideas in your book so that in the future when you're flicking back through it you may find that there's actually a time when you can use some of the ideas that maybe you can't use at the present what i then do is once i've narrowed down my list of brainstorm notes i take my index cards and i split the list of events down into individually themed scenes with one scene written per card so for instance here are a couple of cards from my previous serpent fall session this one says that the weather is unseasonably cold it's summer but there is a winter's chill in the air a light snow has started to fall and a freezing fog has begun to fall over the area and you can see at the bottom during the session i've made a few notes here saying that the players were maintaining a relaxed watch and they were looking out of the windows they didn't want to be too obvious another one here which is a mob arrives 
at the farmstead. The villagers wielding torches arrive to burn the demon. It is snowing heavily. The villagers take this as further sign of evil magic at work. Ken Helm, the farmer, will volunteer to try and talk some sense into them. Suddenly, there is a series of screams from outside, and then all goes quiet. And those are just two of the scenes that I use in a recent Serpent's Fall game of mine. The, the handy thing about having these scenes written down on index cards is that you can use them in any order you want within the game. I normally put them into two piles. As I use a scene, I put it in the used pile, and then when I reach a natural juncture, I have all of these scenes that I can conceivably run onto. I also have some blank index cards in case the players should head off in an unexpected direction. That's absolutely fine. I can jot down information on my blank index cards and run with that, and perhaps bring in some of my ideas for scenes later on. Although I normally, if the player characters go in a different direction, run with what they want to do since obviously they're indicating their interest in it and if you think about it you can normally incorporate some of your scene ideas later on without seeming like you're railroading them into following a strict linear plot progression which is never a good thing and players can always smell out when they're being sort of negatively railroaded in that manner one of the additional benefits of using these index cards as i mentioned a few moments ago is that during the game when a scene is taking place the other side of the index card is blank or you may have some space on the front you can quickly take a pen and jot down any relevant details that have occurred within the game so for instance on this first event that occurred in our last serpents fall game i've made notes here that the player characters had given the disguised spear to Kron and that they'd buried the body of the dead Saxon and that they discovered a wooden locket containing a picture of a blonde woman in it. And that's all handy information to keep for future and to make sure that your narrative has some consistency to it. When your session is finished, what I like to do is I staple or fix these cards together in the order that they occurred, removing any that didn't, and these can be recycled in later sessions, perhaps with some small modifications. You can use these cards in their correct order to update your session notes for use in your future planning. So that's how I recommend you prepare for a session when you have fairly little prep time. Brainstorm when you get the chance. Narrow down your list of options into a few discrete scenes, bite-sized chunks, if you will, and make notes on these scenes as the player action unfolds. Once the game is finished, use these scene notes for any scenes that occurred to update your session notes for the future. Using this method, you should be able to prepare a reasonable session with a fairly short space of time. Obviously, it won't be quite as detailed and nuanced as a session where you have more time to prepare. However, we, we live in the real world and there's not always time to lavish the hours that we would like on preparing for a session. But I feel using this method, you can run a very good and enjoyable session for you and for your players. Well, I hope that you've found this video informative and that you'll consider clicking on like and subscribing to the channel. If you have any comments about preparing for sessions when you have little time to spare or any comments on this video, please leave them in the boxes below. We bring out new videos every Wednesday. And until next time, I will look forward to seeing what you write. Thank you very much for watching and for listening. Take care.